<coughs> Hello. That's not good. Hello. Still sounding good. Do not No one cares. So today we're going to have a go at making a pork biryani, my style. All right. Uh, normally I would use lamb to make this uh, recipe, um, but I've got loads of pork shoulder left over for when I made a pork shoulder day. So we're going to use pork shoulder chopped up. Just pretend it's lamb instead if you want to. So I would just swap this over for lamb normally. All right, um, big, big pan. All right, um, I've ran out of cooking oil. So I'm going to use olive oil normally. I would just use normal base oil, but I'm not going to the shop just to buy, just to buy vegetables. So we're going to use olive oil this time. All right. And in this, we're gonna have a few spices. We've got fennel seeds, we've got cumin, turmeric, ground ginger, pa oh, paprika, I don't want that. Uh, chili, and we're gonna put in some sage, but different, uh, black pepper, and uh, stock pot, which we will add in um, some, some boiling water later on. All right, so get the pan nice and hot. Put back my paprika, see if we can find my chili. She's in there somewhere, who knows? I'll have a look Okay, so uh, in here we're gonna put all our pork shoulder. Make sure the pan's really hot first of all. All right, once that's cooked down, I'll take that out of the pan and then we're gonna add in some onions as well. All right, um, when I'm cooking this off, I'm gonna uh, make sure that it's all mixed in with the dried spices. Okay, so mixing bowl, just use a normal, just use a normal bowl if you want to. All right, just after your mixing bowl, everything goes in. Okay. Season it first, put your salt, a couple of generous pinches, black pepper. And also that pan's nice and warm now, ready for the pork. It starts to smoke already. And then we're gonna put in ground ginger. Again, I'm just being generous with it, I'm not measuring it out. Put me about a couple of teaspoons in there. People are always a little bit afraid when they're using spices, dried spices, they seem to put not enough in, okay? You know, always add a bit more in later on, okay? Turmeric, again, be quite generous. All right, sometimes this stuff sticks, just tip it up, 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 upside down again. Put it back in. Again, looking for about um, a generous tea, a generous tablespoon of that. Cumin. Okay, there's all my dried spices. All right. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll mix this all up. Okay, and then I'm gonna add in the fennel seeds and the sage when I put the onions in. So I'm gonna wait till later on for that. All right, see if we can find this chili powder. So, chilli powder, again if you like it really hot, add it a bit more, I'm a little bit soft when it comes to chilli, so I'm not going to add too much to that. Okay, mix that all up, make sure it's all coated nicely, and then into the hot oil. Turn that back on again now. Make sure it's got plenty of oil in there because you don't want the pork to stick. This is one of my favourite pans because you can get loads in it. If you're, if you're cooking, even if I'm cooking steaks, it means I've got a nice surface area to work on. It's a bit like a paella pan. I make lots of stews in here and things like that. So it's really one of my favourites. If you've not got a pan like this, try and get something with the largest base you can. Okay, because what we're going to do later on, we're going to braise the rice in this as well. So once this is cooked, I'm going to take that out, add in the onions, Put the meat back in again, roast that for a bit in the oven, okay? So I'm going to get a nice dark colour on it in the oven, all right? And then I'm going to add the rice and the stock and then put it back in the oven and that will braise it all together, all right? I won't add the rice until I know the meat is cooked nicely. 
Okay, leave that alone for a bit. So, pork is out. A bit more oil to this pan now. A little bit left over, but I don't want this to stick. Put that in the bowl, put the pork in the bowl to the side, turn the heat up a little bit, like here, I've got, I've got a bit of a mixture going on here. So this is kind of like leftover stuff, I've got a little bit of um, very thinly diced onion and carrot, which I'm going to add in first. And this was from um, some lentils I did the other day, so I'm just going to add them in first. Careful that looks out very small, it's quite hot in the pan, they will burn quickly. And then here next, I'm going to add in, I've got some roughly chopped onions and carrots, which is from the soup. So I'll let them left over, so they're going to go in. Okay, if you've not got any leftover stuff, just get a couple of onions, slice them up, red or white, doesn't really matter. Okay, it's all going to get cooked off eventually, just make sure you don't burn them. Okay, keep the heat a little bit lower. Keep them moving around. Don't just take it, should hopefully get from the dry spices that are on the bottom of the pan as well. Okay, and then the onions just soak that up nicely. All right, and then in here, I'm gonna go sliced onions. And normally I'll grate the garlic, but it's only a little bit, so just a bit of leftover garlic. I'm just going to chop it up finely. Run the knife through it a few times, just be careful with your fingers. It's only a little bit, just add a little bit of flavour. Okay, as I'm wasting it, that can go in there now. Oops. Keep these moving around a little bit. And heat down the tab. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make a little lid to go in this because when it goes in the oven, I don't want it to go in uh, open like that. I want it to have a lid on top of it, but I've not got a lid for this pan, so little trick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little tin foil lid. Get a couple of pieces of tin foil down there, one down here. And then curl the ends together and the side a little bit, it's a bit round, round, curl the ends together, try and do it quite tight around the edges. Okay, so it doesn't come apart. Get that firm there. And then roughly about the size of your pan, a little bit bigger because you're gonna curl it over the top. And then pork's gonna go back in. Or lamb if you've got lamb, remember? Alright, so I'm using pork, but I prefer to use lamb if I can. Still going to be a very nice flavour. Okay, lovely piece of meat, pork shoulder. Good, all the bits are coming off the bottom now. Lots and lots of flavour. And so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to roast that as it is, with the lid on. I'm going to leave that in the oven for an hour or so, check on it, see how tender it is. Might need a little bit longer. Okay, and once it's done, once the meat's falling, it starts to fall apart, that's when I'll uh, add in the rice and the stock. Into the oven, top shelf. There we go. All right then. So as a bit of an accompaniment, accompaniment, accompaniment. All right. So to go with the pork, um, I'm going to do a, a rye eater. All right, a cucumber raita, we're going to put in some coriander and some mint. Um, a raita is um, a, basically an, an Indian 
uh, our complement. Um, it's um, traditionally from Southeast Asia and it's normally made with yogurt and some cooked or uncooked vegetables. Uh, traditionally, most people know that it's got cucumber in it. All right, it's actually very, very similar uh, to a satsiki. So if you're more familiar with satsiki, uh, which is from the Ottoman Empire, okay, or what we normally get in Greece, um, which is very similar to yogurt again, uh, you normally get cucumber in there, but this time we're having things like garlic, olive oil, lemon juice, maybe some dill sometimes instead of that. Okay, and it's just a nice little way um, of cooling down the uh, the pork biryani because if you have it really really spicy, okay, this is just a nice way to uh, have a nice little accompaniment with it. All right, so a bit like a yin and yang, something really hot and spicy, and something nice to cool to go with it. What I've done with the cucumber is I've uh, peeled the peeled it peeled it and deseeded it. Okay, so the reason I've done that is it stops the uh, raita going soggy. All right, so have to be careful with your fingers. It's actually easier to grate with the skin on. Okay, the rind on. All right, so you have to just be careful, take your time. All right, uh, if you don't like coriander and you don't like mint, fine, don't do it. Just put in, just add some cucumber and um, cucumber yogurt. If you don't like cucumber, then just add some yogurt. If you don't like it, well, just don't do anything. All right, so it's up to you. It's just something to add to your your curry if you want to, okay? Make it a little bit different, okay? If you're doing a dinner party, some people might be impressed. I don't know, you can buy it from the shop as well, so if you can't be bothered and you don't want to do anything to go with your curry, then you can just buy it from the shop and be lazy. All right? So that's ready to go. I'm gonna put that in the bowl. What you could do now as well, because you'll see there's loads of water in this still. All right, I'll just show you. Okay, and all that will do is just dilute the flavor at the moment. You could save that and drink it if you're a super health freak. All right, so when adding the yogurt, I don't want it to be watery, I want it to be nice and thick. Okay, so I'm just gonna get rid of some of the juice. And all the healthy freaks now are gonna go, oh, don't throw that away, but it's going away. All right, so, cucumber in the bowl. Next, we're gonna do herbs. Um, I'm going to use quite a lot of coriander. I like coriander. Okay, some people say apparently it can taste like soap, which is a bit weird. All right, um, so nice fresh coriander. You can maybe mix it up if you want to do. You can use parsley maybe. All right, I'm not a big fan of that, but some people might like it. Um, try to chop it up so you don't get big bits in there. You don't want big bits sticking in your teeth, or whatever. All right, so let's chop it through a few times if you want to. Okay, remember with herbs. Okay, if they're fresh, the less you can chop them, the better. You get a better flavor from them. All right, with the mint, going to uh, pick off most of the leaves and then do the same again. And then just keep this in the fridge. You can put other things with this if you wanted to. All right, so if you were, uh, maybe if you're making uh, some chicken tikka wraps or something like that, it'd be a nice compliment. All right, um, you could do it with uh, some dips. All right, so you can make your own little a healthy cucumber to dip to go with your breadsticks or with your with your nachos. Okay, so plenty of things to do with that. The mint will just give it a nice bit of freshness as well. So with your with your curry as you're eating it, okay, it'll just sort of cleanse your palate. Okay, as you're dipping in there, if you start to, it starts to get too hot and you can't taste anything anymore, this would be a nice way of just cleansing your palate, ready to go in for round two of your curry. All right, so again, slice this as thin as you can. Just be careful with your, with your fingers again. Try and keep the blades to the back of your knuckles. Take your time, I'm going quite fast just so you're not getting bored. I hope they're not getting bored anyway. <laughs> all right, so that can go in there. And then all we're gonna do now is just add the yogurt and mix it up. So I'm just using natural yogurt, natural yogurt. You could use sour cream, you could use whatever you want, okay? Whatever tickles your fancy. All right, that's just what I've bought already. That's just gonna go in, pour that in. Okay, mix it all up. And then all I'm gonna to add to this is a little bit of salt, just to season it. Mix it all together, and that's the job done. And this will just go as a nice little addition with my curry later on. All right, better clean down now because I made a nice big mess. Okay, so it should be time to Add the rice now. Um, I've got uh, chicken stock on there, or 
buy them watering in stock cube. Um, could use chicken stock if you wanted to, but make your own. Okay, that's looking good. What you should see, you don't want it, you don't want it to be bouncy, okay? You don't necessarily fall apart yet, but you should be able to put your fork through it quite nicely. Good. Alright, okay, so we're gonna do first of all actually, because I forgot to add the fennel seeds, <laughs> and I'm just gonna fry off a couple of fennel seeds and add the sage as well. That's just my different twist on it. Alright, and then we'll add the rice and the stock as well. Um, not a, not an exact biryani this, okay, it's just sort of inspired by one. Um, uh, biryani, the word actually comes from fried meat, okay, before cooking, alright, so it means fried meat before cooking. Uh, a normal biryani, okay, um, normally they would use a sort of already cooked rice and then they add it to it, whereas I'm going to sort of braise the rice in the pan with the meat in the oven. Okay, so I've just added sage there. And fennel seeds. Done a little bit more sage there actually, kind of got lost a little bit. Alright. Let's make it a little bit more aromatic. Okay, lovely colour there. Okay, I'm gonna use nearly a cup of rice. Alright, it's just what was left in the uh, in the cupboard. Mix it around first of all, turn that down a bit, catch it at the bottom. Okay, get that rice mixed in there. And all we're going to do then, once it's all mixed up, add in the stock. Very nicely done. Get all the bottom bits scraped away. Add a little bit more of the stock, and then when I've added it in, Make sure it comes to the boil before you put it in the oven. Okay, so just add that back in. Bring this to the boil now. Once that's come back to the boil, I'll go back in the oven, so I'll turn it off a bit. Okay, and I've reserved a little bit of uh, the chicken stock there. What I will do is, I, whilst it's cooking, if it starts to dry out, okay, so I'll check it after 10, 20 minutes, 30 minutes or so. Okay, once it start, if it starts to dry out, Let's add a bit more back in. So that's starting to boil now. What I'm going to do is put the lid back on this, put it back in the oven, and then check it in a bit. Careful when you put the lid back on. Pan's going to be very, very hot now because it's been in the oven already. Okay, so just be very, very careful. Place it around the top. All right, first of all, just make sure you don't touch the pan. And then use your cheap towel or kitchen cloth, whatever you want to call it. All right. Just try and seal up all those edges. Wrap it round carefully. And then that will go in the oven. Ooh. There we go. I'll check that on that in a bit. Just carefully point it in. Juices don't go everywhere. There we go. Smash it. Okay, so we're all ready to go. Just took that out of the oven. Uh, all the uh, all the juice has gone out, the water's gone out, rice has soaked it all up. It's got a lovely dark colour to it. It smells amazing. All right, so just be careful. You'll burn your hand. Pan's very hot. Get a couple of spoonfuls of this in there. And if if you uh, once you've made it, and you think it's not quite hot enough, okay, don't forget. Always add a little bit of chili sauce if you want to. Okay, why not? Why not? If you like it a bit spicier, you know, maybe if you've got a family or something and they don't like it very spicy, but you like to blow your head off, whack in some chili sauce. I forgot to check the seasoning, so we'll put a bit of pepper in. Check the salt level. Let's have a ganders. Needs a little bit. Woo, it's a bit okay, so should have done that in the pan really. Should have checked it, but I forgot. Never mind. All right, okay, and then just to top that off, we're going to add in this nice 
edition of some cucumber raita. Det blir. Easy peasy. <coughs> It's got a kick. <laughs> Just like that. Mmm, tasty.